Four public high school students from West Phoenix, Arizona, have surprised the engineering world and themselves by taking top honors at the National Underwater Robot Championship. They beat out teams from MIT and other colleges and high schools, many of them sponsored by major corporations. The Arizona students won with a relatively inexpensive $800 robot built from PVC pipes. They come from families struggling economically, and they are all illegal immigrants. Josh Davis wrote about the competition this month for Wired magazine six months after their win. The team was made up of Lorenzo Santian, Christian Arcega, both juniors at Carl Hayden High School, and Luis Aranda and Oscar Vasquez, who've since graduated. And all four of them join us from the studios of KJZZ in Tempe, Arizona, along with one of their teachers, Fred Lejvardi. Uh, Christian, I want to start with you. I understand you used glue to hold your robot together, and that created quite an odor, so you named him Stinky. Yeah, that's correct. It smells really bad. Well, can you describe him for us and, uh, you know, how'd you come up with uh, some of the thinking behind him? Well, basically, uh, we shared ideas, and uh, that's where we came up with the idea to use PVC. Uh, it's inexpensive, and it's easy to put together. Oscar, could you tell me more, uh, a little bit more about what uh, Stinky looked like? The stinky looked like a cube. He had the PVC pipes on the side, the frames were all PVC pipe. You could see um, like a briefcase box on top with all the electronics and another briefcase in the bottom with, with the battery on it. We have four propellers in there to push it up and down and to push it back and forth. Lorenzo painted it uh, blue and then yellow and then red. Well, Christian, uh, they called you the genius on the team. What kind of skills did you bring? I like order, so I like things to be, in a, to be organized. Lorenzo, dubbed the mechanic, what did you bring to the project? My skills in building. I actually built, rebuilt motors with my cousin and my brother, but that was their, their cars and stuff, so I just learned off what they told me to do. Let's talk about the competition itself. You, you get to uh, uh, an Olympic-sized pool at the University of California in Santa Barbara. There's all sorts of other colleges and high schools there. Oscar, you'd been in ROTC since ninth grade kind of have, have real leadership qualities but when you walked in there what are you thinking well I was I saw the competition and I knew that it was gonna be a challenge for us to even place it was kind of humbling humbling though let's remember that word because it became a humbling experience for the other schools but Luis uh, do you remember what happened when you lowered <laughs> stinky to the into the pool the practice pool when you got to the competition we started testing it out. We, when we took it back out, we saw it was, start, it was starting to leak, and we had a few other problems with the controls. They weren't working quite right, so we had to do a little troubleshooting with that. Oh, in and fact, didn't you have to re-solder every wire for the next 12 hours? Uh, um, this is Oscar Lorenzo and I yeah. uh, soldered him until 2 in the morning. So you spent the night repairing the robot. The next morning, you put it back in the water. Uh, you must have been holding your breath, but then it did work. Christian, tell us about that. It was really something because we see uh, all our hard work and everything just starting to pay off. The robot's working fine. You put it into the water and it hasn't blown up or anything. So we know we're going to be operational. And uh, to be to actually perform in the water the way we were, we were, like the robot was working to our expectations, was really something because you see all your hard work pay off. Did you feel a sense there that you were not being taken seriously? Oh, yeah, that came, that came across a lot. I mean, people were polite enough not to say it to our face too many times, but I just ignored it. I figured they don't know what they're talking about us, and it comes out we were right. So the robot completed a series of underwater tasks, you guys working the controls above the pool. Then on to the nerve-wracking award ceremony dinner. Now, uh, to begin, you won a special judge's award. First of all, why do you think you won that award? Uh, they're all looking at me. This is Freddie. <laughs> um, they didn't explain what it was for other than it was a category that the judges hadn't planned. So we uh, thought that it may have been for the uh, way we used uh, a device to uh, absorb any extra water in our electronics uh, housing. The darn thing was leaking the night before. So who was it who had to run around and find what to soak up this moisture in the battery? That was Lorenzo. 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 We all volunteered him. Oh, yep. <laughs> I had to get up some tampons that were small. I just went to the lady and asked her what are the best product <laughs> I could get with the most absorbency, but also small for to fit the case. So you had to be the only uh, underwater robot with a tampon in it in the competition, <laughs> and so and so. But it was it was genius because it absorbed the moisture. It saved the day. And so, Fred, you were saying that uh, you, you all thought, well, maybe the judges were giving us that, that nice pat on the head award. But then, uh, as, the, as the awards evening went on, you won for design elegance, for technical reporting, and then 
overall winner. Christian, uh, your thoughts when uh, that was announced? I was really shocked. I remember uh, we were all dumbstruck and we were looking at each other and then we started screaming at the top of our lungs. Remember, I, I just jumped at Louise and I don't know, I can't remember if he was crying then. <laughs> But uh, it was it was really something to be up there uh, holding the first place trophy in front of all the other schools. It was an incredible success, you know, against wealthier schools, older kids. And in addition, it's been reported that all four of you are illegal immigrants. Christian, did you feel judged by that? Well, basically, uh, I didn't really care mm -hmm. uh, for that label, and I don't really care that I'm undocumented. That's not going to make me perform less than anyone else. Most people didn't think we'd be able to do it. I know my parents uh, wanted me to do well, and they were really cheering for me, but other than that, any people in the community weren't really that ec uh, ec ecstatic about us entering this competition. And Fred, there are some other hard realities about being undocumented. These prizes are usually a ticket to college, uh, but there are efforts underway to prevent undocumented kids from attending state schools, and we understand it's difficult to get aid. As far as getting any financial aid as uh, federal money is concerned, it's not going to happen because you have to show proof of citizenship or residency. So even though we may have kids that are you know, capable of, of achieving at that level, they kind of have to make other life choices because those options aren't open to them. Well, Christian, uh, you're a high school junior now. Your thoughts about college? Well, here's the way I see it. I'm not trying to hold any errors, but I know I'm a bright kid, and I'm going to figure out a way to go to college. There's been people that are uh, trying to help us out right at the moment, trying to get us a full tuition scholarships to schools like MIT and, and Caltech. It's just always been a dream of mine, being the first in my family to go to college and get a career. And if it doesn't work out, uh, I'm sure there are, there are schools in Mexico that would accept me. So I'm going to make it uh, one way or another. And Oscar? I want to be a mechanical engineer and um, hopefully help design electric engines or something like that for future electric cars. Luis, what do you want to be? Go to business school or something like that. Mm -hmm. Try to start my own business. And Lorenzo can't leave you out. What do you, what do you want to do? What do you want to be? I'm thinking of being a chef and or an engineer. I'm not sure right now. If there's a will to want to do something, they'll figure out what they need to do. Lorenzo's case, you know, when he came into the program, is basically making D's and F's. And because of what he learned by being in the program and the value and what school really means, uh, he's now an A and B student. Now, if he had done that when he first started, he might be in a little better position. But the motivation is the number one thing. With that, you can do, as you see by the result of this competition, anything you want to do if you just stay focused long enough and hard enough. So real concerns, but I'm wondering in the meantime, gosh, has Hollywood called? For six to eight months after we came back, <laughs> nobody wanted to hear the story. We were dumbfounded then, but now after Josh's article, it's like uh, a whole new rebirth. A few weeks later, I think, uh, the story was bought by Warner Brothers, and the producer of that is John Wells from uh, ER. And West Wing. And, and West Wing. Well, there you go. Well, it just make sure... You get your college tuition out of it. Oh, yeah. It's a great story. Thanks so much for talking to us about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Josh Davis's article about the Carl Hayden robotics team from West Phoenix, Arizona, appears in this month's issue of Wired magazine. Meanwhile, the team is gearing up for its next contest, June 17th through 19th, at the Johnson Space Center. Here and Now is a production of WBUR Boston. I'm Robin Young. Please join us again, Here and Now. For a cassette or CD of Here and Now, go to our website, here-now.org or call 1-800-909-9287. Cassettes or CDs are $15 each, which includes shipping and handling. Funding for Here and Now comes from the MathWorks, creators of MATLAB and Simulink technical computing software, on the web at mathworks.com.